thank you for introducing. Uh, I understand Chinese at all. I'm speaking in English today. Hello, I'm Shin Tanimoto. Uh, I'm a board member of Japan Java User Group. I arrived to Taipei yesterday, and I didn't sleep at all last night to finish this slide. <laughs> okay, I would, I would express my gratitude to you all to come here. Today, I will talk about microservices with Spring Boot and Spring Cloud. The title is Start Developing Microservices with Spring Boot and Spring Cloud. Please relax and enjoy my session. Let's begin. Okay, first of all, I will introduce myself. I'm Shin Tanimoto. I'm, I'm working for AcroQuest Technology in Japan. And I, I'm a board member of Japan Java User Group. And I'm working for as, an, uh, as a system architect or a troubleshooter. And my current interests are microservices, architectures, and Elasticsearch. How many of you know Elasticsearch already? Almost no one. <laughs> okay, I see. Yeah, it's good for the search and the log analyzation. Anyway, my GitHub account, Twitter account, Facebook accounts are like this. I would be happy if you follow me. And let me tell you about my background related to this session. Uh, I've been developing. Uh, I've been developing e-commerce site for several years as a chief architect. Once that site was on, prom on premises server, and now it's running on AWS. And to develop the site, uh, I've been using Spring Boot for more than three years. Uh, that when three years ago it was version 1.1, and then we've been trying microservices, microservice architecture since more than two years. The the when I start, uh, start the microservices, the version of Spring Cloud was Angel. Angel is the first version of Spring Cloud. OK, today's main topics are Spring Boot and microservices. How many of you have already used Spring Boot? Please raise your hand, already used uh, half or uh, 30 percent. Thank you. And how many of you have already used Spring Cloud? Oh, two, three, four, five. Oh, just a few, I see. And how many of you have learned about microservices? You know microservices? Oh, 10%, 20%. OK, last question. How many of you have already tried microservices in production? One, two, <laughs> three. Oh, great, great. Thank you. In Japan, when I ask th this question, only a few attendees answered yes. So it seems the same situation in Japan and here. So anyway, what is microservices? When we look for something, Wikipedia answers well. Microservices is, is a variant of the service-oriented architecture. It's a way, I don't think so, but um, anyway. Architectural style that structures an application as a collection of loosely coupled, loosely coupled services. Uh, it's Wikipedia's explanation. So microservices are basically a construct, constructor of the small services. This is the Martin Fowler's explanation about microservices. The left side is monolithic applications, and right side are microservice applications. So a monolithic application have all functions in a single process. On the other hand, microservices have several separate functional processes. Then, uh, if we understand the micro what microservices is, but why should we apply microservice architectures? The aim of microservices are agility and scalability. It is said that what we can get from microservices architecture are this agility and, and the scalability. I feel the same. Uh, we can update 
and deploy some part of applications, not for applications. So it can be as agile, agilely de uh, deployed the application. And we can scale each services as we, as we need. We don't have to replicate the whole applications. So in my opinion, if we compare monolithic application to paintings, we can compare microservices to diorama. Yeah, this kind of one. This must be Gundam or something. You can change the angle, portion, of a portion of characters, and you can also add or remove character, some characters. Of course, you can extend the field and the connection in some fields. It's flexible, agile, scalable. But you can easily imagine that the cost and the skills are highly demanded to create diorama or microservices. Yeah, and I mean creating diorama, diorama is more difficult than paintings. And plus, uh, I have to admit that not everyone needs such agility or uh, scalability. Um, the famous company Gartner said, said that 80 or 90 percent companies will give up microservices because the balance of the, because of the balance of its cost and the demand of agility and scalability. The situation is not easy. But what, is, what if your boss or your customer ask you to apply microservices architecture tomorrow? What will you do? Tomorrow is Saturday. <laughs> I think you don't have to work. Okay, it's just a joking. You should prepare for it as an engineer or as an architect. So learning microservices itself may expand your horizon. You can uh, grow up your skill to learn microservices. Uh, me, for me, I've got lots of things from microservices. So that's why I talk about microservices today. Then first of all, I will start with this word, shuhari. That is the famous word in Japan. This means, the shu means obey or keep or protect. And ha means detach or break or something. And ri means leave. So which means obey, detach, leave or keep, customize, create your own. If you start something, you should learn the fundamentals or traditions. So you shouldn't create your own at the first. The after learning tra uh, traditionals and fun fundamentals, and you can break the traditional and uh, you can customize them. And then you can create your own. That is the notion of a shuhari. But as to microservice micro architectures, there is less traditions, and the traditions are from Netflix, Amazon, or eBay. So, you know, Netflix, Amazon, eBay is a very big company. So if you keep their way, you need it more costs and more skills. We are not Netflix. We are not Amazon. So we can start simple as we need. Today, I'll show you the simplest way to start microservice architecture. So after this session, if you think you will start to create even simple microservice architecture, I would be happy. So I will talk this in this session. First, Spring Boot, and then Spring Cloud. And if I have some time, I will explain some important ideas for microservices. Okay, let's start with Spring Boot. Spring Boot, what is Spring Boot? Spring Boot initializer, and, uh, and then I will explain WebDB testing. 
And Spring Boot is a framework to make it easy to create Spring-based applications. To be honest, Spring Framework projects are now too much complex and hard to learn or hard to start to create applications. So the starting using Spring Framework is a little bit hard. Then Spring Boot helps this situation. Uh, frankly speaking, Spring Boot offers these two things. One is Pomo XML or Build Gradle with some, dependency, some dependencies. And second one is the Build Helper to create executable Jar. So you can learn Jar and you can start up the web application. You don't need Tomcat anymore. If, even if you don't understand now, you can understand soon after some slides. I'll go on. Uh, by the way, when you start your project, what will you do first? You may write your own POM XM or build, build Gradle, listing all gels you need. But it's you know, difficult to list up the all gels. I don't know whether this AOP Alliance JAR is doing, or SL4J is necessary or not, Log4J is necessary or not. So it's a little bit hard to select the JARs. So the second way is copy. The copy from the sample project, there, there are many uh, Spring Boot example projects in, on, the internet, on the internet. And you can copy from copy the ex example project and delete all sample source codes, but there still be unused jazz in the POM XML. So both of these two methods uh, might cause unintended error. So in this situation, I want to introduce Spring Initializer. The Spring Initializer is the gener gener generator of Spring Boot Blank project. It consists of POM XM, POM XML or Build Gradle with some blank source codes. And you can choose several Spring projects and libraries and modules, such as Web, JDBC, JPA, TimeLeaf, or RabbitMQ, or something. Then using Spring, Spring Initializer is a quicker and safer way to start Spring Boot project. Okay, I will show the demo. Spring Initializer is a web application. I'll show the web application. Do you know Baby Meta? Oh, oh, great. The day before yesterday, I joined the concert. Nothing. Uh, this is Spring Initializer. The other is start Spring I.O. And you have to input some project information. It's on the POM XM. And you can select the modules from here. There are lots of modules. That's why Spring, Boot, Spring Framework is complex. Too many modules here. Okay, I'll explain the, how to use the Spring Initializer again. Go start Spring I.O. and input some project information and select necessary pro, uh, project information and sele uh, select uh, ne necessary project libraries or modules. And the push generate project button 
and you can download the zip file. So when I select web and generate the project, I can download the demo zip. This demo zip contains home XM. And there is a Spring Boot Starter Web and Spring Boot Starter Test. This is the blank project of the POM XML. So you can quickly start the Spring Boot project. And you can run Spring Boot project uh, from uh, ID main method execution or Maven, Maven Spring Boot run or uh, uh, Spring Boot initializer zip contains Maven double, and you can execute the Maven double Spring Boot run. Uh, you don't have to install Maven. If even you don't have to install Maven, you as long as you use Maven double. So Spring Initializer helps your safe flight. It's a safe and quick way to start Spring Boot application. Then, what types of applications do you create often? Most people answer Web and DB. So uh, if we want to start developing a Web and DB application, you need, you need Spring Boot Starter Wave and Spring Boot Starter, Starter Data JPA, as long as you use JPA. In the Spring Initializer, you can choose Wave and JPA. Yeah, Wave and JPA. And if you use data, H2 database, you can check here. And generate the project. Only the POM XML changes. Here we have Spring Boot Starter DP, Data JPA dependency, start, Spring Boot Starter Web dependency, and H2 database library for dependency. Uh, by the way, I don't explain about the presentation layer today, uh, such as HTML5 or uh, JavaScript framework, Angular React. I don't explain these uh, presentation layers. I just uh, uh, explain about the microservices, the service la server side layers only. Okay, let's start the creating web application. Here is a called example of Spring Boot Web. This is a controller class for the REST APIs. There are two APIs named find all and find by IDs. Let me explain them. The top of the class, there is an annotation at REST controller. It defines uh, this class is, uh, is for REST APIs, which means public methods uh, MVC controller, uh, Spring MVC controllers, and their return value are the response body in, uh, in converted to JSON. In the annotation for the method, there is request mapping annotation, which defines the mapping for method and HTTP URL and HTTP method. So the first one is the Value is blank, so that is the top top uh, top application resource, and the HTTP HTTP method is get. Then, if you call, uh, if you set up this as a web application, and you call 
you are from your browser, you, uh, and the uh, HTTP localhost 9001, the top application context is the, for the find all. If you have uh, IDs on the URL, you can call the second method. I already put up the database. And this is this is what called find all. And if I add the item ID here, I just get one item at one and three, I have two items. So the request is well mapped to the method. Oh, never mind the content. Oh, oops. So um, it's very simple to offer the web APIs. It's very easy to Start up the web, app, web application or web API. And then next, I will talk about the database. By the way, I'm curious about all mapper usages in, around here. So, how many of you are using JPA? 30%. And how many of you are using Hibernate? Uh, more people use Hibernate. How many of you really love, Hib love Hibernate? <laughs> no one. No one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's the same in the world. Hibernate is the most popular world mapper in the world. But in my opinion, in my opinion, it is not the best one. In Japan, the uh, popular world mapper is, uh, of course, Hibernate is mm, not so popular. Yeah, uh, as popular as my buddies or Doma. Doma is a Japanese uh, engineer. Uh, Doma is the framework that the Japanese application engineer created. And JDBC template is uh, the embedded template, uh, JD, uh, or mapper for Spring, Spring JDBC. OK, anyway, I'm glad to know about the situation of Hibernate. Let's, let's go on to the next topic. OK, I'll show the JPA source codes. Yeah, I already explained the control class, and this is the JPA class. I just defined the interface only. Public interface item repository extends CRUD repositories. And, and without, implement, without implementation, we can get Insert, update, and find all, find by IDs, and delete methods from here. So uh, if, if uh, you don't have to write SQL, the JPA is a good framework. But if you want to write your own SQL, the JPA is not suitable for it. So we use my parties to Adoma. OK, let's go on to the next topic, test. Inevitable tests is a big concern. Most people care about testing, how to test, or what to test. And in the Spring Boot, we have Spring Boot start a test. When you create a pre project by Spring Initializer, the, this module is include, included by the default. The Spring Boot test is like this. You can add two annotations, run with Spring Runner class and Spring Boot Test annotation. 
all you need to test your Spring application is to add these applications on your test class. When you, uh, when you run this JUnit, Spring Boot Startups and Spring Container Works, then you can call your controller class from the JUnit class. The auto wired well works. And if you write this, this kind of a controller test, you should test the business logic and database access. But do you think is it possible to guarantee the microservice quality by several controller tests, only controller tests? It's hard to say. The controller test is just a logic test, not the interface test. We need interfa interface test. It is an end-to-end test. So we should call the HTTP, call from the HTTP client, and execute the HTTP method. Yeah, you can test that kind of uh, end-to-end end test with Spring Boot Starter Test. Adding the web environment parameter to the Spring Boot test, uh, you can start up the, your container and you, uh, when you use test REST templates, the, it's a little difficult to explain, but the web environment, environment parameter value is environment random port. So if there is a vacant port. The Tomcat startups the using some random, random vacant port, and the test rest template knows the, its port number. Then you can access from this test rest template to the server application. Yeah, you can compare this one to this one. Here, I call controller. But here, I call the HTTP, uh, call as HTTP server. And assert some HTTP setter, so uh, we can assert some um, the Lesmos body. The Lesmos body is, of course, JSON, JSON style. So in the end-to-end -end test, we can test the JSON response, the normal case or error case, and we can test validations. Validation works before controllers, so we can t we, we just be able to test only on the end-to-end -end, end -end test. So it's important to know this style. Okay, now we've learned how to start and how to create and how to test the Spring Boot applications. Where is microservices? Some said executable JAR is microservices. <laughs> so I can say we've already created microservices. <laughs> no, that, that, mm, but actually two years ago, really some people said executable JAR is uh, microservices. Let's, go, let's get down to Spring Cloud. It's for microservices. I will explain two things from Spring Cloud. Spring Cloud Eureka and Spring Cloud MQP, and also Spring Cloud 3. Spring Clouds sound like AWS, Azure, or Google Platform Ready Framework. Actually, Spring Cloud, Spring Cloud is Microservice ready framework. It's for microservices, not for just a cloud platform. By the way, what's the difference between audience services and microservices? We can say audience services are like this. User request comes from the internet, and first, firstly, load balancer receives the user request and dispatch to the web servers. Then 
web server receives and send requests to application servers like Tomcat. And each application server accesses to the databases as necessary. If one of them downs, load balancer disperses the request to the living server only. And now we have microservices. Uh, it's a similar to the monolithic one. But we have several databases, and we have microservices layer. In the microservices layer, there are lots of microservices, tens of hundreds of services are working on the microservices layer, and which ha uh, it has their own database or data source, not only data RD, uh, MySQL, Postgres, Postgres, but they will use Cassandra, Elasticsearch, or well, something like that. And if we imagine this kind of architecture situation, we have to care about how does the microservice found other microservices? How the top one can find the bottom one? And then, what if some microservices, uh, some microservice instances increases? When we scale out, what happens? And what if some microservices, microservice instances down? What happens? Imagine, imagine these situations, we realize, that, uh, we realize that we need service discovery and load balancing. In this situation, we can use Spring Cloud Starter Eureka. Spring Cloud Eureka is a, uh, Eureka is a service discovery server developed by Netflix. Spring Cloud Eureka offers Discovery client and Eureka client also. And Spring Cloud Eureka is a member of Spring Cloud Netflix. So Spring Cloud Netflix makes it easier to combine Spring Boot applications with Netflix open source products such as Eureka, Raven, Historics, Zool. So today I don't explain about Historics and Zool, but they are good product. Mm. Uh, to start with microservice. Spring Cloud Eureka works like this. First, uh, there are two services. The one is front service, and second is item service. And there is the Eureka server. When the service starts, it the, this time, item service registers its host and port number to Eureka server. Also, from service uh, registers its host and port number to Eureka server. And the Eureka server now know from services uh, this host and that port number, and item services like that. Eureka server stores the information. And then, Front service want to ask, uh, want to access to the item services. So, front service inquired, inquires the host and the port number of item services to Eureka server. And the Eureka server returns the host and the port number of item services. Then, front service can access to item sub services, item service using received host and the port number. And when as a service instance starts, the second item service instance is start up. It also registers to the Eureka server. And now Eureka server knows from services only one, and there are two item service, item service instances. The front, front service inquires to Eureka server whenever it access to item server, then it can access both of them, both of my item service in instances. Uh, actually, it is the ribbon. The fr front, sub um, front service uses ribbon. Is ribbon is a HTTP client wrapper to bring this this uh, load balancing function. 
And also, when the service instance shuts down, it deregisters its information from Eureka server. The first one, when the first instance shut down, the uh, first information of item services disappears from Eureka server. Okay, this idea is great, but if this is uh, very difficult to implement, uh, it's nonsense. But using Spring Cloud Eureka, it's very easy to start up. All you have to create to Eureka server is only that. Add, add this dependency, dependency in your Palm XML, Spring Cloud start a Eureka server. Of course, you can uh, create it from Spring Initializer. And you have to write one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines of application code for the main, main method, for our main class. Only that, Eureka server, Eureka server can be set up. So Eureka server itself is uh, written as Spring Boot application. The Eureka, as to, uh, on the other hand, the Eureka client, you have to add the dependency on Palm XML, Spring Cloud, start a Eureka. And as long as you are using REST template, REST template is a standard HTTP client for Spring framework. If, as long as you are using REST template, you then have to modify your application code. So, even there is only one uh, service in instance here, or load balance uh, several instance here, you don't have to care about the how, how many services how many services are working. This application code calls inquires Eureka uh, how many how many instances and. Uh, ho its host and port number, get the port host and the port number, and then access to the item service. It's just awesome. The as to service discovery or this kind of routing and load balancing, there are several alternatives options such as con uh, console and AWS load balancers. But Spring Cloud Netflix Eureka is a quicker and safer way to bring service di discovery to the Spring applications. So, my, uh, in my opinion, the, there, are, there is better products. There are several better products, but qu quick and safe is important to develop microservices because to lower the cost and uh, bring up the agility. Then, just a few minutes ago, I suppose that what if some microservice instance downs? Here, we have to care about what if some microservice instance downs during user request? What happens? Let me think about the e commerce site uh, pay, uh, purchase process. First, it will check if the credit card is available and check the stocks and update the stock number, update the purchase status, payment, issues receipt, and notify to delivery, and send email to the customer. If server downs after the number four, update the purchase status, and uh, after five is not, uh, not processed, what happens? Uh, there must be some uh, some problems and claims from customers. Actually, to support a transaction ac across some microservices is uh, almost impossible. You cannot roll back microservice process. So we have. Uh, as a way to process this purchase process. And also, the more 
instances increases, the more this scenario happens. So suppose that you have 10 microservices, and uh, if the possibility of microservice instance down is 1%, only 1%, the possibility of one of the 10 microservices is 10%. So naturally, 10 times uh, by single instances. So we have to take care about the instance downs more. And also, we have to think about, is it really necessary that all procedures finish during a single request? Then I realized that we should use asynchronous process. So not asynchronous, synchronous, synchro processing is like this. The other service calls any uh, sub, some microservices. The asynchronous processing is like this. Other services just enqueue to the some queue. And the for services, they choose the, from the queue and works consumes its process. Then this uh, asynchronous process brings faster user response and scalability and recoverability. The number one fast faster user response. Of course, customer receives the response, although the request is still in progress. And scalability, worker services here for services can be increased, of course. And the important thing is recoverability. Transactions should be supported in each service. So you just keep, uh, keep the track of the microservice level uh, status. So it, is it finished or started? You can, and if some, some error happens and some process didn't uh, uh, were processed, you can retry them just and queue again. To realize this, uh, we can use Spring and QP and Spring Cloud Stream. Spring Cloud Stream is like this. MQP is an open protocol for the messaging. Advanced messaging, queuing protocol, well, like, like that. The other services, other service and queues uh, using MQP protocol to the Rabbit MQ. And other services, item service, payment service, stock service, purchase services, the, the, the queue using MQP protocol. And using Spring MQP, it's, um, it's more like less template. The font is so small, but Here, uh, you just uh, declare the Rabbit template, like less template, and call here the Rabbit MQ convert and send method. It means uh, enqueue the order ID to the issue order queue. And this is the receiver source code. You just add, you, you have to do, all you have to do is to add the annotation rabbit listener annotation and define the queue, queue name. And here, the queue name is EC order, and you can get the order ID from the queue. So it looks like less controller and the rest template. And Spring Cloud Stream is more com complicated. You have to define some source, source class. Here I implement other source. Other source class is uh, like this. There is the output annotation method. And use this, you can Enqueue some message, some message here, 
the order object is enqueued to the arrive bit MQ. And this is the consumer, consumer side service. You can uh, add three listener annotation, and there you can define the queue name. Yeah, you find that Spring Cloud Stream is the Spring Cloud Stream way. It seems more comp complex, but using using Spring Cloud Stream, uh, your source code don't have to care about the messaging middleware. There is no rabbit to MQ or no MQP, Q, MQP. So you can substitute rabbit MQ to Kafka without editing any source code. Yeah. Anyway. When we develop microservices, we have to care about the increases and decreases of service instances than the monolithic applications. But Spring Cloud helps it. That's why I'm using Java with Spring Boot and Cloud. Sometimes I think I should implement microservices in Golang. Golang doesn't, uh, doesn't use so so CPU memory, CPU and memory. You can run microservices in around five, uh, 100 megabytes of memory. Or sometimes 60 megabytes is enough for Go Golang microservices. But there is Spring Boot and Spring Cloud. I continue to using Java and Spring Boot Cloud. OK. It's time, and we should wrap up. Today's topics were only for the start of microservices. There are lots of key ideas about microservices. But I explained already, it is too hard to learn about all of the key ideas of microservices. You know, Netflix. Ne ne we are not Netflix. We are not Amazon. But learning microservices itself may expand your horizon or my horizon. So we can start simple as we need. Starting only with Spring Boot, it's OK. And Spring Boot plus Eureka, and there is no JUnit, maybe OK. So you shouldn't be eager to keep up all key ideas. You don't have to think too much. You just start simple. Enjoy developing your, your own microservices. Thank you very much.